Oh, with, with, with the country town. And they told me now that the head is engaged mm -hmm. and I could go before the 24th of November. I have no hesitation in, in feeling that there are certainly parents who are not capable of bringing up their children. And I mean, the, the, the whole family unit, uh, as a family unit, is great. But there are certainly units within the society that we have, people, fathers and mothers, who are having children and are not capable of bringing them up. And somebody has got to be brave enough to be able to say, you are not bringing up your children properly and therefore either we're taking them out of your care or we're putting in somebody to look after them. There are many parents in Finglas who are very worried about the spread of crime and vandalism in the area, but they're not prepared to come out publicly and voice that concern. For instance, here in South Finglas, a woman promised to gather together a group of local tenants who she said would air their grievances. But then nobody came forward, and then the woman herself declined to be interviewed. She said she feared reprisals. She said she thought her daughter would be raped if she gave us an interview. Such is the hidden fear, the hidden anxiety in this society. But we did find two women in South Finglas who talked to us about their day-to-day -day lives. You're literally terrified now of the children going out. You're afraid to go to sleep in case they're attacked on the way home. I never had this problem in the inner city. And then the inner city was really rough. There's trouble all around Finglas. Not just in this road or the next road. It's all around Finglas, everywhere. What can you do about it? You're not getting any help from anywhere. The people are afraid to come out now at night time into trouble. They're terrified to come out. You come out to help on people, you run in. I came out to help me one night. But I went back in when I seen the pigs flying. I wasn't standing out to get myself out. May had to go back in. Where our girls, Karen got her fingers broke the same night. What are you to do to do out here now? What effect did that incident have on Carol, your daughter? Well, I was afraid of her boyfriend leaving her home in the night time because I was afraid he'd pick on him again. He was afraid of her walking down on her own because he said I'd be worried in case they would attack her on her own. So I was kind of all tensed up, waiting on her to come in, terrified something else was going to happen. And then the two smaller ch children, they had to be put on tranquilizers because they can't sleep with the worry of it. They're still not sleeping. And how old are they? One is five and one is nine. I can understand the problems. And it's basically when you have the likes, we say, of a five-year-old taking tablets, and you have women on Valium tablets over afraid to let their children outside the door for case they might be mugged, or there's women afraid to walk down to the shops in broad daylight because they get mugged in their handbags, taken off them, and dragged across fields if they don't let go. You know, and there's old people coming out, well, I won't mean old people, but men in their 50s coming out of the pub drunk and gangs waiting around the corner to pounce on them, to, draw, to rob them for the fuel bob they have in their pocket. They're going around the back of the shops and they're sniffing glue and uh, they're mixing now. This is not only confined to the youth, the male youth. This is confined to all the youth, and I am including girls in this when I say that. So what the result is, a girl fancies a certain fella, she'll go where he is. If he happens to be one of these hard men, as, well, for want of a better word, I'm calling them hard men, but she'll go to where he is and naturally get involved in what he's getting involved in. If he's involved in the drinking and the glue sniffing or robbing the shops or going around and stalling cars, she'll go for a joyride with him and various things like that. And this is how the girls get involved. Then, of course, it comes to maybe the two of them get a few jars too many and they go around the back of the shops and start making whoopee. And before you know where things end up, the girl becomes pregnant. It happened to me own daughter, not in the same circumstances, but she became pregnant. She's still going with the same chap. But this is a widespread thing. It's not just confined to my daughter. 
there's a lot of daughters in the area, a lot of them, that they are, they're, they're, what you call it, they're getting pregnant and they're being forced into marriages at a very young age. I'd say 80% of them are being forced, literally forced, into marry just for the parents' respectability. But what they do not seem to realize that they are forcing these teenagers into a life that they know nothing about. We need jobs for those youths out there. We need youth centers. We need facilities for them. There's no facilities at all around here. Nothing for them to do. We need those things, and we need them now. Fingless has 50,000 people, but no dance hall. This bare, cramped church basement is the weekly venue for a disco at one pound a head. One small community centre, a totally voluntary effort. This hall was built in 1971 by the people themselves of West Fingers, without any help from anybody. We have seven days a week sports in the hall. Come on, keep going. We could not cater for all the needs, needs of the youth of Fingers. As I've stated, we could only uh, allow one session to go on at a time. So uh, we, we would say that, well, for the cater, to cater for the people of West Vignes, which is about 30,000 people in West Vignes, you'd need about five more community centres like our own. We have, are running this, this association by our sweat. All the trees. Nothing else. We're getting no help from anybody else. The only thing that's keeping us going is that we run two bingo sessions. All the sixes, 66. Sean, what's it been like for you in this Finglas run over the last two years? Well, midweek you don't have any problems, but Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, I think the best way to describe it would be as absolute hell. Because you're running a gondola with uh, gangs of teenagers who seem to get high on the bottles of cider and bottles of wine. Now, even if you don't let them on the bus, 
they throw missiles at the bus when they get on the bus, they urinate upstairs, they cause trouble with other passengers. Uh, my own conductor was assaulted here only a couple of months ago. Uh, the reason he was assaulted, he tried to stop some of these lads throwing light fittings and seats out through the back emergency window, which is up on the top deck. When you say he was assaulted, uh, what happened? Well, assaulted, he was dragged off the bus and he was kicked on the ground by four of the youths. He was badly bruised under both eyes. He had a lump on his head, lacerations on his elbow, and his knee was twisted. He spent about six weeks out of work. Now, do you think this kind of incident is unique to Fingless? Is it? No, I wouldn't say it's unique to Fingless. It seems to, it seems to have gone go on all over the city. Uh, Assaults are common in Ballyfermot, they're common in Cabra. Uh, I'm only quoting from my own experience. So, Sean, what do you think needs to be done? Well, I think the only answer is more radical policing of the area. Uh, as things stand at the moment, I think anyway, and I'm sure most of the other people out here think that Fingless is grossly on demand as far as police are concerned. Uh, the way the problem affects us, one patrol car out here, one motorcycle, if we put in an emergency call to our garage, we're in the position that we might be in a pool of blood by the time a guard a car or a motorcycle a guard eventually arrives. Crime in Finglas is rising sharply. With one Garda to 10,000 people, the police can't cope. It's a crisis right across the city. I feel sorry for any policeman that has patrol Finglas. They, they are walking people like everybody else Try to get a week's wages out. I know people are going to say, who does he think he's fooling? But I tell you what, it would be the honest people that admit that, the that he feels sorry for the policeman. <clears throat> Joe, do you, do you think there are enough police? No. In 